Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a tool within Civil 3D that helps make it possible for us to create an automated site data table. So let me, let me explain. To create a site data table, what I want to do is I want to have information in it, not only the parcels that make up my project and the areas that are represented by those parcels, but I'd also like it to have some intelligence in that I'd like to know uh, how much area is in open space, how much area is in detention, what's the gross site density, uh, what's the overall property size, what's my maximum minimum lot sizes, things like that more than what we get in a standard report. And I want to show you how we can go, go ahead and, and facilitate creating one of those tables today by using a tool in Civil 3D along with a little work in Excel. So let's go ahead and get started by working with some, some parcels here. I've got some geometry to represent these parcels. I've inserted it from a, a GIS file. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, take this information and turn it into Civil 3D parcel objects. So for right now, I'm not going to necessarily worry about cleaning up the geometry. We'll just go ahead and create them uh, and turn them into Civil 3D parcel objects for our, uh, our demonstration today. So we'll go ahead and window those. I'm going to right click, we'll say enter. And the trick that I want to do is when it comes to the parcel style, that's how I'm going to designate um, how this should be identified or leveraged later when we start working out some math, like what's open space, what's detention area, um, you know, what, what uh, value should be looked at when it comes to determining maximum, minimum lot sizes, things like that. So I've got a standard Civil 3D template that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is just use the default styles that are here and we'll define my lots as single family lots. We'll go ahead and erase existing entities. We'll say OK. And if I zoom in, I've got a number of lots that have been created and numbered automatically um, listed as single family one through 60 some. All right. Now, just to make things a little bit easier, rather than going through and identifying a bunch of additional lots, uh, which I would have to do if in a real example, but just to create something schematic so we have a, an idea of what we're looking at here. I'm going to create a, a rectangle just by typing in rectang and picking two points. And let's say this was my overall project site. You know, once again, it's certainly not going to be a rectangle. It would, um, you know, we'd have to take and define that, but we'll just go with that right now to define my overall site. Let's take and make another uh, uh, rectangle. And let's do uh, one here to represent what might be a detention area. All right, so maybe I'd have a parcel down there for that. And then we'll have another rectangle that would represent uh, the area that are open space. And I could have, you know, once again, multiple areas to represent that. Just want to have some placeholders for those values so you can see how this process works. All right, so let's go through. And the next thing I want to do is define, since this is my open space, uh, we're going to come back. I'll use the up arrow to go back to create parcels from objects. The uh, select uh, my objects. We'll go ahead and select this one. This is my open space. So I'm going to come down under single family. I've got one set up for open space. So we'll do that. We'll say OK. That's automatically defined. I'm going to uh, right click. We'll repeat create parcels from objects. Grab this one. That's my detention. We'll say enter. In this case, Civil 3D doesn't have one that's automatically set up for detention, so I'm just going to use basic for right now. We'll go ahead and click on OK. And then the last one, I want my overall. So we'll create parcels from objects, grab this guy. And I will do this. We will create a new site because a site is a container, if you will, that we can control the interaction of our Civil 3D objects. Uh, encourage or discourage uh, the interaction of those objects. What I'm going to do is take and create one that's called uh, overall project so that I don't have to worry about, you know, further subdividing it into pieces uh, of the parcels that are on the inside. So, and this for my overall project, uh, the parcel style that I will associate with that is property. And we'll go ahead and click OK. All right. So what I want to do now, I've got a uh, number of different types of parcels created. I'd like to go ahead and, and create my uh, site data table. The way that I'm going to do that is we're going to come over to the toolbox here. We'll go to the reports manager and the report that I'm going to run is under parcels. We're going to run an area report. So I'm going to double click on that. 
We'll go ahead and just uh, export what's selected. It's the only thing that I have in here is parcels. I could uh, maybe, you know, just try and be selective about what I push out, but that's all I have anyway. We'll push out everything. And I'm going to put that in my Tuesday folder here with a default name called Civil Report. We'll say Save. And when I do that, if Excel is on my machine, it's automatically going to launch Excel, and I'm going to see the report that I created. All right, now if we look at that, well, we've seen reports before. I've seen how I could bring this report into Civil 3D. Certainly this helps me by giving me information about the parcels and the square footage and things like that. But the place that it doesn't help me is it doesn't really add any intelligence to it to tell me, well, how many single family parcels do I have? Uh, how much open space is there? What's the total area of detention? How much of it is property, you know, or the, my total, total property? So what I've done is I've created in Excel a... Uh, template that you can use as a um, point of reference to get started and what we'll do to leverage that is I'm just gonna click and hold drag down to the bottom we'll select all the information that's in here I'm gonna right click and we will copy that to the clipboard or I could hit control C to do that then what I'm gonna do is we'll say file open and we're gonna open my template so here is my site data table template let's move that down on the screen so it's a little bit easier to see and you see my, my template is, uh, you know, got the area that we'll use for the site data table in my drawing file or in my model. And then I've got a couple areas here that we can fill in as well. But let me show you how it works. I'll just come up here to the top. We'll click on paste here. We'll just click in that cell, right click, and then paste in the values from our report that was automatically generated. And when we do, it automatically calculates for us and, and completes our site data table. Now, nothing's magic. I'm far from an Excel expert, but by leveraging just a little bit of Excel work, creating some formulas, we can do this fairly quickly. So, for example, total project site area. If I select in here, we can see from the formula, if I select that, it's going to look in column A, and it's going to look for anything that begins with the word property, and it's going to add up all of the values that make that up. In our case, there was only one, but then it will total that and put it in here. Now, the reason I put these in, and I mark this as in green, is maybe you've already got parcel styles established in your office, and you call it something other than property. You'd like to give it a different name. You could come in here and just swap out these names, and the table would continue to work the same as it's working for me. All right, as for computing the number of lots, I'll click on uh, 61 here. Basically, it's telling me that it's going to look into this column, column A. It's automatically going to count it if it be begins with single. So it's single asterisk because they're, they're all unique. So anything that begins with single is automatically going to be counted. And in our case, there's 61 lots. Does the same thing to determine the maximum lot size. Find the maximum lot size in this column. So it looks in this column to determine anything with single. When it finds it, it automatically looks at the B column to determine the size and it reports back what the maximum, minimum, and average is. And then we can keep working our way down. You know, the, the computations for the rest of it are very similar with respect to determining density and total open space. All right. One other thing that I've added is I've added some conditional formatting just to take a look at. Uh, when it comes to conditional formatting, maybe if there's a minimum lot size of, say, 10,000 square feet, or in this case, I've got it filled in as 12,000. You could type that value in here, and it would automatically highlight this, the information in the table for us, thereby giving us another level of uh, QA, QC to make sure that what we're creating you know, works or, or meets the requirements that we're trying to attain. So in my case, I need an open space less than, uh, my percentage of open space must be greater than 15% you know, or more. Uh, my gross site density needs to be two lots per acre. And you can see that uh, my total open space, I'm in good shape, but my density and my minimum lot sizes are, are too small. All right. So now we've created the table. Let's go ahead and uh, save this. I'm going to save it into my uh, Tuesday folder here. We'll just call it uh, site data table. Actually, we'll just give it the name of the project, perhaps. Uh, project Y site data table. We'll say save. All right, and now what we need to do is be able to bring that back into Civil 3D. So let's come back into Civil. We'll bring that back in using the table command. So I'm going to type that in. We'll type in table. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a data link to that Excel spreadsheet. 
So I'm going to say from a data link, we'll click on the, the icon here, and then we'll create a new Excel data link. The name of this link, we'll call it uh, site data, because we can have more, uh, more than one within our model. Browse for file. We're going to go out to our desktop on the Tuesday folder. Here is the uh, Project Y STD that we created, or SDD, DT. Say that 10 times fast. We'll say open. Uh, as far as the, we're not going to link the entire sheet. We want to link to a range. Let's come back and look at that quickly. The range we want to link to is L1 down to O, and it looks like 12. All right, so let's come down and we'll take a look at that. Give it the range. I want to bring in L1 to O12. And we'll click on OK. Sometimes it will show you the preview. Other times it will not. It's not a problem. In this case, it, it just showed it to us. So that's great. If it doesn't, that's OK, too. Sometimes when it reads the file, it doesn't always um produce the preview so we'll wait and see what we get in civil 3d so if you don't get a preview don't worry about that we'll click on ok and then i'm going to click on ok to place it in my file we'll place it the uh, size is by default it's uh, small here let's split my screen in half by clicking on the minus sign here reconfigure my viewports to create two vertical ones and let's zoom up and we'll see here is my site data table maybe let's give myself a little bit more room for that all right now we can come in here uh, if you look at uh, in the help you can see all types of information about how we can come in and start tweaking you know the alignment of the different values in here and it's actually creeping off the screen but I could make these uh, middle center justified you know so even though it doesn't look exactly like it did in Excel we could come in and start tweaking it with respect to the uh, the lines and how the table itself is configured but the thing that's important is it's it's tied back to that Excel spreadsheet, um, and it's dynamic in the sense that if I was to change my Civil 3D geometry, let's say maybe my um, property got a little bit smaller, maybe my open space got a little bit smaller, all right? The reason I'm doing that is because when we run the re new report, maybe we'll see that the uh, um, value of open space, my gross site density, we'd see those numbers pop up on the screen, but... We've uh, made a change to that. Let's go ahead and uh, export this guy again. So we're going to export that back out to my folder. We'll call this Civil Report 1 because I think my other one is still open here. So we'll export that as Civil Report 1. Let's bring this down so we can see it. And what I'll do is click and drag down to the bottom grab all of my values, control C to copy it to the clipboard. We'll come back to my site data table for this project. Select the first cell. We're going to hit control V to paste. When those go in and paste, we see that it automatically updated all of my values. And we see now that my percentage of my open space falls below the 15% that was my requirement. All right. So very, uh, very, very helpful, very easy to do. Uh, I'm going to save this because nothing's real until we actually save it. So we've saved that with our values. I will come back to Civil 3D and when I do, on occasion you will see that um, a balloon notification pop up in the bottom corner of the screen that my linked table has, uh, the data has been updated. If I uh, don't see that or I don't see that immediately, I can always highlight the table, right click, and we'll come down and we'll say update our uh, table data links. And when we do, it automatically reads it. We see it's at 61 now, and we see my open space percentage fell below 15 to 14.24. All right. So with that, once again, like I said, our ability to export this area report information, as well as any of the reports that are here, we can leverage that with Excel, that if the report itself that we're getting right out of the box in Civil 3D doesn't provide all of the information we're looking for, by tweaking some of that Excel information, uh, or tweaking some of that information in Excel, we can provide the table or the output to meet our specific needs. So I hope this has been helpful. What I will do is the site data table itself that I've created here. I will uh, post a link within the comments uh, as well as on our uh, blog that you can download it if you'd like to experiment it with yourself. And um, hopefully give you a starting point and um, 
maybe encourage you to start generating some site data tables or similar types of information using Excel and Civil 3D in your next project. So once again, hope this has been helpful, and I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.